สวัสดีครับ This in Thailand is called a w i That's a greeting, and it's also a farewell. It's an acknowledgement of honoring the person that you are w i i n g to. And in the West, the Namaste in the yoga world has become more familiar, but it's a respectful greeting and farewell that. I really, really love. Right. This is the third of my videos on the purchasing mother's son, my my new novel, which is set in in Thailand, where I grew up, a country I love, a people I love, a place I love. This is the this is the setting that was called Siam at the time for this story that takes place in the 18th century, in the the first part of the 1700s, up to the time when. The Burmese came in and besieged the great capital city of Ayutthaya, which was built on a river island. This, just briefly, is the the very beginning of the introduction of of the book. Introduction, present day Bangkok. This is a woman, turns out to be named Dr. Helena Price from UC Berkeley, but she's in Bangkok. The man was my destroyer, not only because of his good looks. From his appearance, I figured I could be his mother, though now I'm no longer certain of anything about him. All through my lecture in the auditorium of the American University Association in Bangkok, his presence in the front row totally disconcerted me. As I spoke about Thai folklore and supernatural beliefs, his piercing gaze never once left my face. I stammered, lost my train of thought, and made all those nightmarish mistakes. I've never made in my many years of teaching at UC Berkeley. I fumbled my way to the end of the lecture. To my dismay, the man followed me as I left the podium. In the foyer, I rambled through brief consultations with several old friends from my student days in Thailand, plus some questions from polite members of the urban intelligentsia. Bereft of the kind of deliberate patience an author releasing a new book is wise to employ. I felt forced to trade a few obscure scholarly quips with one brilliant Thai intellectual, as he had some minor royal status and major political influence. All the while, the unmistakable redhead from the front row remained peripherally unavoidable. Those devilish pale blue eyes kept me frozen and trapped. Still, he showed no impatience as the others chatted with me. Eventually. I recognized him as a means of escape from my inquisitors. Excuse me, Kun s a w a n t i n i I said to an old friend and everyone. I am so sorry, but I must go. Thank you all so very much for coming tonight, and I sincerely look forward to your reactions to my new book. With hands prayerfully together before my face, with a slight bow, I performed the versatile Thai Y of hello and goodbye. I took hold of the redhead's arm, and used him to plow through the rest of the crowd. When he turned a nod and slight smile upon me, and the other people seemed to evaporate before us. Your thesis is fascinating and plausible, he said in a low, deep voice with a definite English accent. He spoke almost in a whisper, and yet the sound cut crisply into my head like a sharp knife. Into iceberg lettuce. However, you're quite wrong. That felt like a powerful hand pushing on my solar plexus and nearly felled me backwards. How do you mean that, sir? Your psychological and anthropological explanations concerning the altered states produced by trance, conditioned belief systems. That govern sensory experience and so on are far from the whole truth. You see, many of the Siamese folk beliefs and magical practices you mentioned are quite real, and in fact, are actual realities. สวัสดีครับ